With social distancing in place, home delivery of food seems to be on the rise. But with that, the commission to be given to food delivery aggregators is an added cost to an already bleeding restaurant industry. This gave birth to Bro Eat, a community platform for ordering food directly from your neighborhood restaurants through WhatsApp, helping them save margins as well as jobs. Joining me today on the show is co-founder of Bro Eat, Pawan Cherry. Hi Pawan, thank you so much for joining in. Well, I believe we both have the common intention of saving the restaurant industry and thank you so much for being a part of our initiative CT Cares where we have worked so closely with restaurants that we are going an extra edge to save this industry that has clearly entertained us for so many years. Kamya, thank you so much for having me here. I uh, generally feel that you know the entire initiative of CT Cares that Kalitas has taken up is great. I feel uh, the kind of impact you guys are creating within the industry and you know helping us reach out to so many people uh, is just something that is going to help us a lot. So firstly congratulations on Bro8. If you can tell us what this initiative is all about, how is the user experience going to be? Kamya basically um, Bro8 is a, as a concept, right? It's uh, a delivery platform which is started by the restauranters for the industry, right? Okay. So uh, what we realized soon into the lockdown that uh, the delivery business uh, you know as an overall percentage of our revenue was anywhere between 5 to 8% and maybe for some restaurants about 10 to 12% of the total revenue but yeah. as soon as the lockdown started and uh, soon into it it was 100% of the total revenue that we are making currently and even going forward uh, the entire delivery business is going to be a massive chunk of the total revenue that we make even post the dining in starts right now uh, having so much revenue coming in from one business model we had to ensure that uh, the entire business becomes sustainable so uh, while we take on that much uh, responsibility and ensure that you know there's a lot of extra costs now considering we were pulling up our hygiene game you know uh, Earlier also it was all going, but now it's super strict with, uh, you know, a lot of government uh, permissions and, you know, uh, laws as well. And we ourselves want to ensure that any sort of product that goes to the customer is completely, you know, hygienic and very well uh, prepared. So uh, keeping all that in mind, we figured out that uh, we wanted a platform that sorts of uh, helps all restaurants uh, generate orders, but that at the same time gives them unbundled services. Right. So, you know, basically giving the power back in the hands of the restaurants so that is how uh, bro it uh, actually started up and uh, yes uh, we are in our mission we are on our mission to get that going and uh, you know help restaurants as much as possible absolutely so how does this work basically i from what i read uh, you got to place orders through whatsapp so how does it actually work right so um, basically we wanted a platform which is very very approachable to everybody and uh, there's nothing that can uh, be easier than connecting to a consumer in India today on WhatsApp because that is the primary mode of communication for all of us, right? In all sex and classes of the community. So um, rather than, you know, having people download an app, we thought, uh, why not have a WhatsApp chatbot that can engage with them, send them a ordering link, which they can click, which opens up like a pop-up and the user interface is just like, you know, using any other app. And uh, that makes it easier for consumers. They understand it better. And uh, soon into that, we started uh, doing a couple of test trials. And uh, the kind of response that we got from our customers uh, was great. Uh, people really, uh, you know, vibe with the platform. And uh, they generally thought that it's much more easier to use Roit versus any other app. All right. Sounds interesting. I'm yet to try it out. Now, um, there are already a lot of delivery aggregator platforms that, you know, we are used to. Uh, what Correct. is... Why did you feel the need of coming up with Broid, and what is the key differentiator? Uh, generally, restaurants uh, shell out a commission to uh, you know aggregators, which amounts to anywhere between twenty-five to twenty-eight okay. percent. Right now, that on our total revenue chunk is a massive amount. Now, the reason those aggregators charge us this amount of commission is because they are providing us those services, right? So they have uh, a lot of manpower involved. They have a lot of app technicals, etc. Right. So hence they charge us that commission because, and even after that, most of them are still unprofitable. Right. So um, it only means that they might have to charge us even more for them to actually sustain their business. Now, while keeping this in mind, irrespective of, uh, you know, that 25 to 28% is too high for a restaurant to shell out on each and every order. It completely, you know, makes our business unsustainable. Earlier when it was a smaller fraction of our business, right. now keeping that in mind, uh, there had to be a platform where um, restaurants take up a lot of responsibility, which currently the aggregators are doing. 
So they fulfill the delivery themselves. They ensure the customer coordination is done from their end. A lot of uh, the back end of feeding of menus, editing, changing, updating pictures, etc., has to be taken care of by the restaurants, right? So what we are trying to do is we are trying to uh, position Broit as a platform which uh, engages with consumers, which uh, creates orders. But at the same time, just like the good old days where the restaurants used to handle the rest of the coordination and fulfillment themselves. So uh, what Broit does is Broit technically. generates orders and hands it over to the restaurant while also ensuring it's giving the restaurant enough tech uh, you know online tech support to be able to uh, and the dashboard etc to be able to facilitate it but right. uh, what we've done is for the deliveries we have tied up with uh, experts within the delivery segment okay. so there are uh, you know third party uh, rider services like dunzo shadow packs we right. pass load share what kind of commission would a restaurant now have to shell out if they don't go in for the already established aggregators uh, compared to broit so broit is india's first zero commission platform uh, oh. we don't charge any sort of commission per order to the restaurant so what we've done is we put a flat back end fee of uh, 5 rupees per order up to an order value of 300 now india as a market generally has an average order value of anywhere between 150 to 250 rupees right so that means that most of the restaurants on the platform will end up paying 5 rupees per order uh generally for other restaurants which come in the premium category say up to a 1000 rupees we charge 10 rupees per order so uh, that is uh, how the uh, price fee module of uh, broit is set now except for this the restaurant has to pay about 35 to 40 rupees if they end up using a delivery uh, rider service right so uh, on a on a average order say of about 500 rupees they shell out say about 50 to 60 rupees per order versus the 25% that we were paying earlier which was almost about 125 rupees or more Right. right so this is massively cutting down uh, their uh, total amount of money spent except for that what broit does is uh, it gives them all the possible data when it comes to uh, customer details right so you have the name of your customer the phone number and the address because now the restaurant is delivering it this helps all the restaurants to try and reengage with them retarget them uh, you know send them any sort of promotional content if uh, you know something's happening basically it helps them to re- um, re-engage with their customer whenever they want which earlier considering the current aggregators doesn't happen because there is no sort of data transparency with the restaurants absolutely you did mention about how home deliveries is now like the 100% source of revenue for restaurants uh, but i'm sure it is right. still a very small margin of what they made in the pre covid era what is the kind of observation that you've seen um, what's the sentiment like are people open to eating outside food is there a sense of fear and if you can just let us know about how has it been for bro eat so far yes, we've reached the second phase of people uh, who are convinced that yes uh, and even keeping all the scientific facts in mind that yes uh, you know covid doesn't spread through uh, food and also if it's handled in the right way then you're completely safe with it and i soon feel that uh, you know we are getting into the third segment of people also Uh, from what we started uh, you know two months back getting into delivery to now there's a massive difference uh, the revenues have really shot up and uh, 90% of the restaurants are doing more delivery revenue than what they were doing in the pre covid era uh, right and uh, specifically uh, bars and uh, you know places which are famous for their nightlife are now integrated uh, really good food menus and uh, they've gone all out marketing that so um, that is something that is really working and i just uh, feel that yes if people can't go out all the restaurants together are trying to trying their level best to get that entire experience now to the houses that's very optimistic and it's good to know that the revenue is again shooting back because it's been a tough time for the restaurant industry which cities are you currently present in and given the tough times how hard or easy was it to onboard restaurants can you take us through the number of restaurants that are there and also the number of cities that you are present in of course so uh, kamya as of now we are live in mumbai uh, we started our uh, beta testing from uh, banda to andheri with about 10 odd restaurants and now we are already live with about 100 odd restaurants between banda to andheri uh, except for the restaurants that are live currently we've got interest from over 2 and 1/2 thousand restaurants across the country uh, so what we've done is we've segmented them between different cities and uh, bombay delhi and bangalore is uh, are the three cities where we are planning to start our operations first and uh, as soon as uh, you know that settles down uh, jaipur indore raipur and uh, you know uh, gujarat so these are some uh, places that uh, operations will start as soon as possible uh, as i said bombay is already live south bombay goes live in, maybe in the next week 
and uh, Delhi is something we are uh, onboarding restaurants as fast as possible now because that's the next city we are going live in. You mentioned you got to place orders through WhatsApp. So is there a number? So uh, basically from all the brewery platforms, uh, we are going to be trying uh, to, you know, spread the WhatsApp number as much as possible. So we are uh, trying to do it three ways. Uh, number one is we're giving out the direct WhatsApp number for people to just save it. So once it's saved on your phone, the Brewery chat automatically appears on your WhatsApp, right? And uh, it's a verified account. You can just quickly uh, have a conversation and get that going. And uh, what I feel is for customer, it's just the first time when they have to save the number. Uh, it's like, you know, the first time you have to download an app, but this is much more simpler and much more uh, shorter in terms of a time frame. So once you've saved the number, you're through. Uh, another interesting thing is that I believe you're also taking home chefs on board. So is that going to be, uh, and is that true? And what is going to be the procedure? So India has a massive unorganized sector of food businesses, uh, mm -hmm. of home chefs and street food vendors, right? The reason they are also in the unorganized sector is because there is no possible tech that has been developed for them to do business, right? People always look at bigger establishments and always ignore the smaller vendors. So with Broit, uh, you know, again, using WhatsApp, which is much, it, it's, it's as easy for a home chef or even a street vendor to use because they are currently using it. We are opening up to both the segments. But yes, we will be onboarding only uh, merchants with FSSA and all the government regulatory permissions available who have them. We want to support that cause, make it widespread, uh, tell each and every vendor that look, this is a tech that you can consider your own. You can use it. There is no onboarding piece for you. The customer generation is something that we do. And also at the same time, once you tell a customer, look, I am on a tech platform. So today I can sit at home, order my favorite safe food eat right yeah. from my favorite place, knowing that he's on a tech platform. Otherwise I don't have to go there to get it. So this is uh, something that we feel is going to be revolutionary and we want to, uh, we're planning to launch this in the next month or so. Right. You mentioned that the delivery is currently at zero, uh, but is that going to be in the long run as well? I believe it is going to be for the first hundred days and if you can clear the air, do they never have to pay a commission or is there a time frame in mind? So, uh, till the 30th of August, uh, there are zero platform fees. After that, as I said, for the uh, for any order up to 300, it's 5 rupees and then so on and so forth. The slab keeps increasing depending on the order value uh, that has been placed. But at the same time, we've ensured that the platform fee is so low that uh, we're trying to use that to basic uh, basically cover our costs for our servers and, you know, trying to support the community in every other way by keeping the cost as low as possible so it doesn't pinch any rest. Absolutely. So it's really a good initiative, Pavan. You mentioned it's not just restaurants, it's home shifts as well as street vendors. Uh, what are your future plans? How do you plan to expand Broid and have like an all India presence? Do you have anything in your mind? Also in terms of, uh, you know, customer acquisition, uh, any marketing initiatives that you're planning? The best part about that is our restaurant community across the country, right? While it's so huge, it's so close-knit right everybody knows everyone and uh, you know people are really really supportive so um, i would definitely to start off with want to give a credit to curly tales for this because you know it is people like you and your company who help uh, you know um, causes and maybe organizations like grow it who want to help the community you all are helping us spread the word you all are helping us reach out to millions of your viewers and it is just this way on on how we're trying to, uh, you know, take it forward. Yeah, absolutely. And Pawan, it's, it's very disheartening to know that, you know, one in four restaurants may never reopen again is what industry leaders are saying. And we really thought that, you know, this probably could be a good option for them to run a cloud kitchen as well as getting a delivery service with the help of you guys. So do you think that can be a good option for restaurants who are now contemplating whether to continue or to shut shop? So, uh... See, Kamya, the thing is that there are a lot of factors which are not in our hands. Example, uh, you know, uh, restaurants being able to deal with their landlords and that is a massive reason why a lot of brands are shutting down because they, they don't probably have rental waivers and that's a massive cost, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, a lot of restaurants who are, uh, you know, ex uh, have some sort of uh, concession or something from the landlords, you know, and now platforms like Broid, we all need to come together and try and push this forward and, uh, you know, get through these tough times. And moreover, just understand each other as human beings and try and understand that uh, if this is the core business that all of us, uh, you know, uh, derive our bread and butter from. So the only way to help us keep this going for a longer term is to support each other. Absolutely. 
Before we wrap, would you like to name a few popular restaurants through which we can place an order? I think if you're looking out for Asian food, uh, there's Royal China and Kwai Kitchen on board. Uh, if you want your favorite pav bhaji, Chef Sagar across the city is uh, delivering via Bro8. Uh, if you're a seafood lover, then you have Mahesh Lunch Home and their ghee roast that you just can't miss out on. And uh, if you're a pizza lover, there is Chiliza on board, so you can order some great pizzas from them. Wow. Uh, so yeah, I think... Uh, uh, any cuisine that you love, uh, there are, uh, you know, the stalwarts of that particular cuisine uh, on the platform. Absolutely. And I think this is the time to give back to all the restaurants who fed us so nicely all these years. Pawan, wonderful chatting with you. Thank you so much and wish you all the best. I really hope Bro Eat really, uh, you know, grows in leaps and bounds. Thank you so much, Kamath. It's always my pleasure to uh, speak to you and uh, thank you so much for supporting Bro Eat and helping us uh, spread the word. <laughs>